Hello again, everybody. Alex here once again to bring you another tutorial in the series entitled Texturing 3ds Max and You. I am representing the Instructional Design and Distance Learning team at Northern Kentucky University, headed by Mike Lively, the one and only. We're still running with the original scenario we had. A client came to us and wanted us to model their house, which is an attraction for those who enjoy the paranormal. And they want the model to be implemented online eventually on a website, strictly for advertising. So we went into Max, we modeled this house, I showed you some tips and tricks on that, and then in the third tutorial I showed you how to make a template via the Edit UVW modifier, just like this, that you could export into Photoshop and then put a texture on this house to make it look more realistic. And in the fourth tutorial, we had some fun in Photoshop, I gave you all the tools you needed to finish your texture, and I gave you homework to finish the texture. Now, in this tutorial, I've gone ahead and opened up the texture that I finished, and yours will look totally different than mine, depending on what reference photo you used, or whatever you used, actually, whatever you modeled. But the principles will still be the same. And before us, we have this texture that we've done. Now, I'm going to give you a few more pointers. Go over here to the Layer section. Notice how I labeled everything very specifically. That's just good practice and etiquette for any time you work in Photoshop. If you just have random layers that say layer 24, layer whatever, yeah, you can know what those mean, but it's just better, and especially if someone else is going to do anything to this afterwards, to label everything. So I've labeled the top layer the mask, and again, go back to the tutorial 4 if any of this is confusing. I recommend you watch all the tutorials previous to this before you continue. Black Friday is this little section over here. Windows and doors are obviously windows and doors. Brick is every instance where there's brick on the house, and roof is every instance where there is, well, shingles on the house. Paint is all the paint, which we've kind of aged with this yellow, and a little bit of brown and various brushes. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to take this and bring it into 3ds Max. All right, let's get started. This texture is pretty much done. Now, I will do a little bit of finessing. I'm going to go up to this Black Friday layer, and I'm going to unlock it by clicking that little lock. I'm also going to zoom in. We're going to go in 100% so I can see these windows. Now, to make this texture look more believable, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow underneath the windows just to give it a little bit more realism. I'm going to go up to Brushes and find a brush that kind of has a soft edge to it. Now, I'm going to use the 17 pixel diameter one. Go over to Open Scene. And instead of being 10, let's go to like 25. 10 is kind of low. Okay, I'm going to open up the colors. I'm going to hit make sure I can get, find the swatches. I'm just going to find like a blackish gray color. I'm not going to go total black. That's more of a preference of mine. I know I'm still in the Black Friday layer. It's unlocked and everything, so I'm ready to start adding the shadows. I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of shadow. It's very subtle. Some would say incredibly subtle. But subtlety will help your texture along. As they say, the devil is in the detail. And the more detail like this you have, the better. Okay, wait one second. I'm going to finish up these windows and come back to you. Well, that didn't take long. But still, I didn't want to bore you with all of the window shadowing. Also note that I put a little bit of shadows underneath the eaves. And also underneath where the roof of the porch is. All right, now, looking at this in detail, you'll notice, wait a minute, Alex, some of that shadow's going over the window. What's that about? Well, what that is about is the fact that the Black Friday layer is actually above the windows and doors layer. So just go back to Black Friday, lock it because we're done with it, go to windows and doors, unlock it, and then drag that by just holding down your mouse button above it and then hitting lock again. And check it out. The shadow's now below the windows. This texture is more or less ready to go into Max. All right, so I'm going to save it, File, Save. Now, one of the best things about 3ds Max, one of many, is that I can import .psd files, which is the native format in Photoshop, and use them as textures. That is awesome, mainly because we can go back and edit this PSD, and it'll immediately show changes in Max when we render it. It's incredible! But enough of that. We saved the texture, and I'm going to minimize this and go into Max. Now, I already have the Edit UVW map open. And again, go back to the fourth tutorial if this is new to you, and I'll explain everything there. So what I'm going to do is make this a little bit wider so you can see this Pick Pattern drop-down box up here. Right now it's Checker because that's just the default in the background. But I'm going to 
click that arrow and go down to pick a texture because we're going to pick the texture we just made. Now what will open is the material slash map browser. And there's a lot of options here, but just go to bitmap. This will bring up the select bitmap image window and just navigate to the folder where your texture's at. Now conveniently, I've placed everything for this project in a folder called Spooky Scary. And look, there's a Spooky Scary underscore UVW template that we just created. See the little preview of it right there? Select it and hit open. Another PSD input options window opens up. You can either say collapse layers or individual layers. Collapsing layers fine. Again, we can go back into Photoshop and edit this and save it again. And Max will go ahead and make those changes in our render. Hit OK and look at this. In the Edit UVWs window, we have the texture we just created right here. I can click on the different planes of the texture and manipulate them. I can go up to this little Move cursor and then move it around. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo something, and that's a general shortcut key in all programs. I can click this to rotate it around. And that comes in handy probably more than any tool because sometimes you'll notice that your windows are upside down on a surface like this rectangle right here. And it's easier to just to move the rectangle itself all the way around, make it do a 180, than it is to just go back into Photoshop and move everything around. This is a scale shifter. And this is a general freeform tool. Now that we're finished bringing this in, I'm going to minimize this and get back into just a normal Max. I'm going to press the M key to bring up the Material Editor window. Okay, now make sure that one of these circles is selected that is blank. Now this just pretty much gray sphere with minimal lighting means that it's blank and it's ready to put whatever you want on it. Go down to where the Diffuse option is and click on the little square beside it. And we get that Material Map Browser window again. Double click on Bitmap. We're asked to which bitmap file we want to use. Select Spooky Scary UVW template again and hit open. It'll ask you what it did before. Hit OK again. Now you'll see that one of the spheres has the texture on it. Hover over your newly created material sphere. Hold down the left mouse button and drag this over to the model. And then let go. Notice how it changed colors. This means that the texture is actually on our model now. If you wanted to see your texture on the Sculpted Primitive that we made inside of Max itself, go over to the Material Editor window again and find this little icon. It's a cube with all these checkers on it, white and blue, and click it. Now, in my Max, all I see is it turns to white. That's some weird thing that my version of 3ds Max does because of my, compu my computer specifically. But on most computers, it will go ahead and show that texture on there. But if you can't do this and you need to see what the render looks like, minimize the material window, go over to rendering in the main menu, and go down to render. And there it is. All that hard work, all the modeling, all the texturing, and we have our house. Now you'll notice that whatever our active stage view was, Max will automatically render for us. So that's why the house is kind of over to the corner and cramped. But I'm going to minimize this and move the house a little bit more clearly on the stage. Maybe zoom in a little bit by just moving my wheel, scroll wheel forward or backward on the mouse. Go back to render and just click render. And it will re-render it. Closer view of the house. Isn't that neat? I'm going to minimize this and go back to the front of the house maybe. Move it around more so you can see the front door that I put in there. Pretty sharp, eh? Notice the shadows underneath the windows make it a little bit more believable. Now, the shadows underneath the eaves here are a little exaggerated and don't really look like shadows at all. It looks kind of dirty. So I want to go back and actually change that in Photoshop later, but I have the ability to do that. Go back into Photoshop, erase that in whatever layer it's in, and just save it again. Come back into Max and hit Render, and it will render without the shadows there. Now, for those of you who are wondering, Alex, this is pretty basic. Let me remind you that this is a basic tutorial about how to uh, texturize a model. And also, since we're going to ultimately put this online, you want the textures to be not necessarily simple, but a little bit less complex. We're not looking for hyper-realism or something that you would run on a PlayStation 3 or a 360. We're looking for something that will run in a browser fast and effectively. And for doing that, we have a low polygon count. I'm going to drag this over. 
And remember, you can hit 7 to toggle the display that tells you how many polygons are actually in your primitive that you sculpted. And primitive is just a fancy word for the shape or whatever we have made in Max. Notice we have 82, which is pretty good. It's not going to be processor intensive. And we have a texture that's pretty nice. So there we have it. We put the texture onto our model. Are you ready for this? We're about to take this and put it online. How are we going to do that? Via Paper Vision 3D. Now there's a lot of other things we'll talk about too, or we'll mention in light of that. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I can't wait to show you more. Until next time, this is Alex, care of Mike Lively's Instructional Design and Distance Learning Team at Northern Kentucky University. Thanks a lot for listening.